Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to the second of this week's reviews. Uh, good afternoon to you. My name is Lee. Uh, this is your virtual airline pilot with you again. And uh, we're looking at another new payware airport that's come out not so long ago. We're in Poland, um, one of the nicest places to go visit, actually. It's only an hour and a half, two hours from the UK. And we are at Copernicus International Airport in Roslaw, Poland. Echo Papa Whiskey Romeo. Um, in the simulator, it's still known as Stratovici, um, which I'll put up uh, before you. Um, this is a payware scenery by Fly Too High, and it's available for both the PC and Xbox versions of Flight Simulator 2020. Currently, we're in version 1.1. It's a fair size download. It's 2.4 gigabytes, and it installs at 3.4 gigabytes. And it's available from both SimMarket and FlightSim.to. Um, prices, well, it's cheaper at Sim Market, strangely enough. Um, Euro 13 euros and 19 cents, which equates to roughly $12.71 US, or 11 pounds and 76 pence UK. US and UK prices are estimates and include VAT and, and tax, which of course may vary depending on your country of purchase. I think this is one of the first times I've seen where sim market is actually cheaper than flight sim tot to um there isn't an awful lot of difference but they are they are certainly are cheaper at uh, sim market and of course they include tax um okay so the main features of the airport it says it's fully modeled enhanced 3d city lighting i haven't really had a look at the city maybe we'll get the chance pbr materials on airport buildings and ground both 2k and 4k Internal terminal modelling, custom animated vehicle traffic, apron clutter and customised airport detail. And it says animated humans. Now to be honest I haven't found any animated humans anywhere in the airport. Um, what I might do at some point is turn up um, the features and see whether that affects it. But the only animated humans I can find are the ones out on the ramp that are basically a Sobo defaults. But, um, okay, so let me say straight off the bat, um, it's a nice scenery, and from a pilot's point of view, you have everything you need through the day and through the night. Um, and navigationally, the runways have everything as per the charts. The only thing is missing are the touchdown zone markers on runway 29. But everything else is as per the charts. That said, there are problems. Um, problems with the rest of the airport when you consider today's modeling capabilities um, I did find I've spent a good 45 minutes 50 minutes looking over this airport during the day and during the hours of darkness um, again it comes to life a little bit at night which is great but there are so many Asobo globes around which we'll look at um, there's a little bit of a terraforming issue land side um, but um, again it doesn't affect the airport per se um, but um, other little anomalies, well, the cars in the car park, although they're there, some of them are in pretty badly modelled. And um, to be honest, also, inside the terminal it has been developed, but there are a lot of brick walls where there shouldn't be. For example, going through the security check, which is actually there, uh, you come up to a brick wall in front of your airside once you've gone through it. So they've, they've modelled some of it, but not all of it. It doesn't really look um, the way it should. However, that said, it's a nice airport and it's reasonably well priced. And as you can see from this footage here, generally it fits in really well with um, the surrounding terrain. And flying into and out of it as a pilot, you're not going to have any problems. I'll show you the view from the cockpit later. But um, it's great. It's okay. So to begin with, let's start with some history. This airport's had quite a bit of history over the development period. And let's talk about some of that history now. So, Copernicus Airport Roslau, or Echo Papa with Whiskey Romeo, is a public use international commercial airport in Roslau in southwestern Poland. Owned and operated by Roslau Airport Company, it is Poland's fifth busiest airport and is located six miles or ten kilometers southwest of the city center. Has a single runway, one passenger terminal, one cargo terminal, and one general aviation terminal. Rosla Airport is also used by the Polish and United States Air Forces. 
Airport was built in 1938 as Flugplatz Breslau Schöngarten Airport for the German military purposes before World War II, when the city was still part of Germany. It was the site of a military aviation school, the Luftkriegsschule Breslau Schöngarten, as it was known. The airport was operated briefly by the Soviet forces following the war, before being used for civilian purposes in 1945. Flights operated to Warsaw, Lodz, Poznan and Katowice. By 1992 destinations also included Krakow, Reznau, Gdansk, Szczecin and Kozlazin. Apologies for my pronunciation. Port Loznitsi Voslo SA was established as a company in January 1992 and Roslau Airport assets operated by the state-owned Polish Airports Authority were transferred to the company in January 1993. First international flights were inaugurated in January that year, serving Frankfurt in Germany to begin with. Significant airport improvements have been completed in the late 20th century. A new international departures terminal was opened in May 97, followed by a new domestic terminal in November 98. Cargo terminal, international arrivals hall and installation of a new meteorological system were completed in 1999, followed by a new airport fire station and air apron extensions in the year 2000. New air traffic control tower, duty free area followed in 2001. December 2005, the airport was renamed after the famous astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, who received a scholarship to study in Raslaw during the years of 1503 to 1538. The airport's new name, Copernicus Raslaw. In the first nine months of 2007, the airport served over 9, 972,000 passengers, and so the existing terminal space was expanded by 20,451 square feet, or 1,900 square metres, to alleviate some of the congestion, but most importantly, to make the terminal facilities conform to the requirements of the Schengen Agreement, which was implemented at Poland's airports in March 2008, 2008 even. With further expansion implemented, the airport can handle over 7 million passengers per year. In May 2014, the HEMS Helicopter Emergency Medical Services base for the Polish Air Ambulance Service was launched at the airport. In 2015, Ryanair announced that it had selected Kopernisk Airport in Roslaw for its aircraft maintenance base. The construction of the hangar to fit two Category C aircraft, such as the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320, was finished in June 2017, and the airport also upgraded its ILS system from Category 1 to Category 2 low visuality operations in April of 2016. Due to the existence of NATO military garrisons nearby, in which US troops have been stationed as part of the Atlantic Resolve operation since January 2017, Ruslaw Airport is often used by the United States Air Force Transport Aircraft Command, with aircraft such as the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III, the Lockheed C-130 Hercules and the C-5 Galaxy. On the 23rd of September 2019 in New York, the Presidents of the US and Poland signed a declaration on the deepening of defence cooperation in which Roslaw Airport was designated as the headquarters of the US Army Air Transport. So there you go, quite a bit of history behind this airport. It's changed hands and been redeveloped over the years. Um, let's now have a look at the runways themselves, or the uh, single runway, and uh, see what it's like in the lower light, and then have a look at the navigation system. So runways, Copernicus Airport Roslaw operates a single runway, runway 2911, which measures 8,212 feet or 2,503 meters in length and is made from a concrete asphalt mix. The airport lies at an elevation of 406 feet or 124 meters. Both ends of the runway feature both RNP and VOR approach options, centerline lighting, and with runway 29 also featuring touchdown zone markers and an instrument landing system certified for category 2 operations and we're looking down um, the throat of runway 29 now. And runway 29 features the airfield lighting system with sequence flashing lights 
and precision approach path indicators on the runway left side which you can see there you can see the flashing strobes the only thing it's missing is the touchdown zone marker lighting which should be about here there's the touchdown zone and the lighting is missing but that's the only thing and it's really nothing really to write home about let's have a look at runway 11 so here we are looking down the throat of runway 11 which features high intensity airfield lighting system the standard version and the precision approach path indicators again on the left side of the runway so the runway approach navigation lighting systems are as per the charts with the exception of the missing touchdown zone lighting at that end of the runway but um, anyway that's that's perfectly acceptable um, it's really good it's, it's you, you're gonna have no problem landing here um, during the darkness hours or low visibility hours so very very nice no problem there at all and as you can see the airport lies in a quite a really nice location and as I've lowered the light you can see how the lighting looks you can also begin to see the number of Asobo globes floating all over the place but we'll come to those later so next thing to do is have a look at the jetway we'll um, go back to daylight and do the jetway and uh, have a look at that okay so we're going to test the jetways um, and in order to do that I'm going to connect the tug first um, and just see how that goes I have noticed that um, in some of these sceneries the tug goes right through the nose gear wheel and then flips to one side so we'll have a look at that and once the uh, tug is connected then we'll activate the jetway because the tug won't be in the way there we go so the tug connected now let's do the jetway So it's moving nicely weathered as well here you can see okay it uh, touched the aircraft nicely but the canopy went right through which is a real pity so from the other side let's disconnect her there's always this little delay before the jetway moves but that's not bad at all there we go that's disconnected the wheels are nicely out of the way and uh, that went pretty well actually and to be honest the jetway looks really quite good so that about does it for jetways for you so now we'll start an airside tour first from the northwestern end up by the threshold of runway 11 which is to my right We'll go down the airside area ramp area all the way down to the other end and then come back up the land side externally to have a look at what's on offer. So from this distance as you can see the cars in a car park models look perfectly acceptable. Maybe a bit different when we get down close but here we go you've got radar dome there but as you can see airside everything looks really pleasant the stand markings ground markings weathering the road markings are crystal clear although I don't see an awful lot in the way of traffic there's my aircraft and you can see some ground clutter everything looking cool there that looks pretty good so I've got one animated vehicle there landside don't see any um, other animations what I'm going to do before I carry on this video I'm just doing a quick break and I'm going to up the um, the traffic and people just to see whether um, I can improve that because I didn't see any animated people at all when I first looked at this okay so I've improved my settings and taken them off a bit um, and let's see whether we can see anything so we'll start by going the other way across the ramp and again you get just get a chance to look at um, the aircraft stands everything is pretty much as you need all that you need I particularly like the jetways the modeling on the jetways is really good 
and the standard modeling generally looks great. It's really quite nice. So we continue um, easterly now, we go along the taxiway. You can see the stand markations are good. Um, you've got signs in the grass there that point you to the stands, which are actually going to be a huge help at night time. It's really quite impressive. So the modelling air side is really, really good. So now we're coming up to the cargo building there. Um, no internal development in any of these buildings. Now here we've got the control tower and there is internal development but no people. So there you go, you can see inside you've got um, well what they are, they've got um, advertising screen on the monitors and they're looking out towards the airport. You can see your screens and everything. Everything is black down there at the bottom. And you've got, as I said, you've got advertising on the monitors, which is rather strange. And again, no people inside. So here's the fire station next door. Bit of a closer look. I believe these are generic models. Um, they're not additional ones. Fire station looks fine. Perfectly acceptable as the building. It's got the weathering on it. And again, no internal development. So this is the inside of the fire station building. Just to give you an idea, all of the buildings that I can see that I've been into, they have no internal development, but they are complete. They've got walls, a roof, and as you can see, they've got um, some detailing. Um, the, the main development is in the terminal, which we'll look at shortly. That's the fire station and the control tower seen from the other side. And there you can see a foam tender down here. So let's continue the tour down to the southeastern end of the airport. We're coming up to um, Apron 1 and the de-icing area, where they've got more stands and a little bit more development. And here you can see the same attention to detail on the outside of the buildings. Um, it has been nicely done here. While we're here, I'll just show you the quality of the cars, which unfortunately leaves a little bit to be desired. So there you can see, look, we've got sort of flat wheels. The bottom of the car is missing, and it's pretty much the same on all of the cars that I can see, with maybe one or two exceptions. Um, it's possible that they've done this to keep the frame rate high. I don't know, but um, my opinion, it's just a real it's a pity. It's a lack of modelling, um, but there you go. So there you can see what looks like a default vehicle. This, this vehicle is used quite a lot roaming around the airports if you leave traffic on, but even that hasn't been modelled correctly. This, this really is a pity. Let's the scenery down, in my opinion. However, let's continue to have a look here, land side. Some nice trees and foliage has been done really nicely. Again, this building is complete inside, but there's no development inside as such. When I was talking about terrain anomaly earlier on, I'll show you this. So here you've got sort of default photo scenery and you've got this hill going down and further back where the main terminal is, which we'll see later, you'll see that the airport itself seems to have also been raised up out of the ground, hasn't been properly terraformed. Um, but again, it doesn't really affect you as a pilot. Um, it's just something I notice when I tour around the airport here. But some nice modelling on the building generally there. Looks really, really nice as we come over the top here. Out onto the apron. And there looking back the other way you can see it's just very, very nicely done. Lots of nice bits and pieces there. The airside road looks really good. And we come out onto the other private jet area.
Again, nicely model hangers. They're complete inside, but there's no internal development as such. Now this is the de-icing pad. Um, as you can see, there's no equipment on there, although they've got lights and stands. And I, if I remember correctly, this is lit at night. But again, you've got uh, signage there on the on the grass. While we're here, let's have a look at the entry signs during the day. So there you go, blue airfield edge lights, entry signs to the runway, which also are lit at night. We've also got two windsocks here. Um, I think one is default and the other one's one that they put in. But uh, no, perfectly okay. So there, a quick look across the threshold of runway 29. And there you can see you've also got access from the, uh, the southern side. Um, apron 4 as it's called, which I believe was partly used by the military. And there are one or two anomalies over there which we'll look at and they show up better during the darkness. Okay, so let's track back towards the main terminal area. We'll have a look at this as we pass over it. As you can see, I mean, it looks really nice. It's a beautifully, beautiful location. And they have done some work on some of these buildings. Um, which is quite impressive, I have to say. And the location generally is beautiful. There you can see part of the slope as it goes down to the car park. Um, you've got cars parked there a little bit all over the place, which is a pity. I come down a bit. There's the fence line, which is quite nice. But again, you see you've got lorries that are parked outside of the area into the grass, in fact, into the fence line there. So I'll slow this right down so you can have a look. Again, the same unfortunate low quality modelling of the cars. Remember these signage here on the side because you'll see them repeated somewhere in the most strangest of places to be honest. But as you can see generally landside it looks quite it's perfectly acceptable. The the signage is crisp and clear. Um, the car park markings have been nicely done, they've not been left to photo scenery. Got this weird little anomaly where the trees all change as you get closer. Trees look a bit strange actually. Not too sure if they're correct there, I don't know, but um, it'll look a bit strange. So we've got one gentleman there who isn't animated in any way. So here we are looking at the terminal from land side looking in. You can see the development, which looks quite good. It looks really quite nice. And again, these signs are really crisp and clear up close. So here we are right up close to one of these signs. And as you can see, it's crystal clear right down to the signature. I mean, that's impressive. That's a real, really impressive. But looking land side, it looks really, really quite nice. They haven't left it to photo scenery. They've developed it nicely. Here you've got concrete of varying shades, road markings, all looks good. We're missing a few cars, maybe parked up, taxis possibly. And we're missing some animated people or even static people. This is the only person I can find. And looking in the other direction, again, the view is quite nice. Ambience is quite nice. Um, but again, model cars being let down by their low quality. See, so once again, when you get up close, you can see the low quality of the cars. So let's go inside the terminal and have a look. So we start through the departures door, see what we can find. So no door animation as such. And here we are inside the departures uh, end of the building. Okay, nice modelling. Um, some nice signs up there hanging from the top. And the structure looks really nice, as does the floor. However, um, we have got um, empty desks, information desks or whatever they might be to the left side there. Not sure what we're seeing on the right hand side there. And there are offices or desks that have been enclosed. 
So they're obviously officers of some sort, um, but they're, they're not modelled in any way to tell us who or what they are. Got the standard Russell Airport sign above there. And that's interesting, the sign is the wrong way round there, so obviously it's been modelled correctly on one side but not on the other. And we've got the same problem there, signs the wrong way around. Stairwells are really nice and there's an elevator there which is a static. And as we come to this end, which actually is modelled as arrivals on the outer doors, if I remember correctly. We'll have a look in a minute. Okay, so here you've got your check-in desks. There's the car that you can win. Um, again, just a real pity. No passengers, no check-in staff, just everything's kind of derelict really. It's a beautifully modelled interior, which is completely lacking from people. So here you've got, um, as I say, these signs are all the wrong way round. However, on the plus side, here's the departures and arrival thing, uh, departures board, and we go up really close, and it's still really crisp and clear. Um, I really like it when developers do that because it just adds to the whole ambience. It's just brilliant. So just looking down this side of the building here, you can see the entrance there on the lower right side. You've got various offices down there, which again are modelled, but um, no signage and no people inside them. Let's go to the security area, which you can see there to the left. So again, you've got nice signage here. Um, a real pity that the hanging signs are the wrong way around, but here's the security area, which is probably one of the nicest modelled security posts I've seen anywhere. You've got the um, X-ray signs, the X-rays themselves here, the inbound roller and the exit roller. I mean, this is pretty close. There's your archway metal detectors, um, and it all looks quite nice. There's the entrance. And this is where, having cleared security and collected your bags, you would go round into airside. However, as you can see here, you can't, because this is all blocked up. This is stone wall here, and um, there should be a, a wall here as well, because you don't really want to go through security and then go back down to landside checking. So the entrance to airside, which actually is modelled, by the way, we'll look at it in a minute, has been blocked off. It's not been modelled, which is a pity. So here, looking at the upper level, you can see you've got offices. Um, and a corridor. Again, no modelling. The modelling just isn't completed. Um, to say the interior is modelled is, um, well, it's just stretching it a little bit, really, because it's modelled, but it's not been modelled. Well, it's, it's just so lacking. It's just so bland, which is a real pity, because the structure modelling is beautiful. And there, if we look at the upper level, you see you've got a little restaurant there and the, these are I think these are the first stairwells or escalators I've seen where they've actually modeled the the steps which is quite impressive so there's 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 anomalies here and there are good things here but thankfully as far as pilots are concerned this is all about the inside of the terminal and it's not going to affect you so here's the view from inside the cockpit. It's daytime, as you can see. I've got the aircraft parked, everything shut down. This is what you will see parking up during the day. And of course, it's perfectly acceptable. It's just what you'd expect. So from a pilot's point of view, we've got absolutely no problem at all. But again, getting back inside, as you can see, some nice tables, a nice little developed area here, and you've obviously got the building but uh, we've got no idea what this is. There's an entrance there. Who knows, this could be access to the toilets. But if they're serving coffee, tea, meals or whatever, we still don't know whether it's this building. And looking in the other direction, as you can see, it's fairly empty. And we look back to land side. Now we can see the signs are all the right way round. So let's pop airside and have a look at what's been developed airside. So here we are in the airside departure gates lounge area. As you can see, we've got the same departure boards with the same clarity when you go up close. Seating looks good um, and you can see through all the glass. It's all as it should be. A certain amount of tempering which is nice. Let's go up to one of the gates here. 
So here's the gate loading point to the to the jetway bridge goes through here. Um, these are the things where you put your ticket stubs down and the um, it uh, detects what tickets you are and validates you as you go through. And here you've got the airline check-in desks. Here's the inside top of the jetway. And there's the other end of the jetway where you actually go down to the jetway proper. The jetway interior is modelled but the access to it isn't. So there you can see the door to the churning jetway. But then here you've got the jetway itself modelled inside. So we've got something done there which is nice. So we'll just take a little tour airside of the departure lounge. And as I said, I can't see any animated people at all. Not sure where they are. There's a distinct lack of shops. Okay, a couple of signs on the right there. Um, and signs on the jetway bridges. I mean, it all, it's all nicely modelled and it looks really nice. But um, there's, there's a lot missing from here, unfortunately. So there we go, there's an overview of the terminal, land side and air side, control tower, all the bits that we've had a look at on this side of northern side of the airfield. Um, before we go to the southern side and see apron 4, for the moment let's turn the light down and have a look at the lighting here generally. Okay, 20 to 7 in the evening local time and as you can see the sun is beginning to set now and the lighting has come on. You can see straight away Green centerline lights down the taxi, main taxiway and also they extend into the stands to help you park. Now we've literally just got the lighting come on so there isn't an awful lot of apron lighting but everything looks really quite nice. The building's nicely lit up and here you can see what I mean. There are just literally dozens of Sobo globes all over the place where you would think there would be lighting poles such as these ones here. Surely there would be lighting poles in the car park that haven't been inserted or modelled. They've relied on the globes, which, when you get up close, looks pretty weird. And again, looking in the other direction here, you can see uh, Sobo globes are plenty all over the place, all the way down here. This road, obviously, is a road. It's lit, but instead of um, <coughs> lamp posts of any kind, you've got these globes floating all over the place which for me look pretty unrealistic. So looking towards the threshold of runway 29 out here, as you can see the runway's got plenty of lighting, that looks fine. Um, here's the apron 4 on the north side that we will, we will have a look at shortly. But um, let's look at the view outside of the cockpit, win cockpit window. So there's the view from the captain's seat looking out the cockpit window to the terminal after you've just pulled up and shut everything down. All looks fine, no complaints at all. So let's go down to the ramp airside and have a tour and have a look at the lighting itself generally. So again, starting from this point, here we go over the car park. Here you can see the dozens of floating globes all over the place. But coming on to the airside ramp, you know, and you've still got them here, look. Um, the signage looks okay, lighting looks fine on the ramp, the signs terminal has a nice colour about it. Um, it. It really is annoying to see these globes floating all over the place where they really shouldn't be. So look, they're all literally floating everywhere. There's the cargo building. Control tower inside the interior is lit. There you can see the interior and uh, unfortunately globes all over the place and the fire station's got some lighting as well and again we've got these globes that really are a bit of an annoyance really so as we head down to apron one um, you've got some lovely lighting on the building's land side there now we've done some development work on that from what i read in the comments but here as we approach apron one and um, yeah, nice bit of lighting, globes all over the place, but um, you know, which is a pity. But it all looks nice. Very pleasant. 
Uh, you've got lights going up to these hangers, but unfortunately no la lighting on the hangers themselves. Here's the de-icing pad. Now this is interesting. Yep, there we go. I have to go up really close to see the lights themselves. They are light poles. I was beginning to wonder. We drop down a bit, we can see. So they do give the lighting as indeed they should. And there you can see we've got the lit signs towards entrance to the runway just as they should. No wigwags, but uh, no problems at all with that. So let's go across to the northern side, apron four. There you can see two, we've got two um, wind socks, not really sure why. Again, we've got a Sobo globes floating in the air, lighting up these pathways. So these are areas where you can't sort of go. Now these are the anomalies I was talking about when I asked you to remember that sign. These are hangars, which I believe are used by the Air Force. And look, I mean, you've got this weird sort of texturing. The buildings are built inside. There's no internal modeling. There's no um, tools or aircraft or anything sitting inside. But as you can see, you've got this um, sign texturing here, which really looks kind of weird. Let's go down a bit closer. So there's the outside of this little hangar and there's the inside. As you can see it's there but there's nothing inside. Now here's the other hangar which looks like it's got a lighted sign right behind the doors but inside it's just an empty hangar. And looking in the other direction as if we were coming out as you can see it's still a dark door. So not really sure why we're getting that white light. And again, as you can see, two hangers there, complete inside, but no internal modelling. But we've got this weird texturing. Somebody hasn't done something right here, and I'm not really sure why. Or it's just been missed, but it looks weird. And the roof looks fine, but as I said, this here... This all looks a little bit strange, and... Um, a little bit out, a little bit of um, out of character I think I think it's just been it's been missed or un incorrectly modeled so there's the rest of apron four this is on the on the southern side of the airfield let's go back to the main apron so as you can see the main apron itself airside looks great looks perfectly good and there you get a view of the airside and land side inside the terminal the setup and how it looks it's nicely illuminated and here we are looking at land side of the terminal. Um, again, illumination is fine. Pity about the Asobo globe sitting all over the place. It's a real pity. And a nice little sign there that's illuminated. And as I've said, this is the only person I can see um, that's different from the um, default Asobo guy's airside. Just one person, not animated, standing there. Quick look land side there, you can see the road going out of town. And there you can see the terraforming issue where the airport appears to be sort of raised up above the default land. Hasn't been modelled in to fit properly. Although, as I said, when you get out here it's not really an issue because there's nothing really to particularly to worry about. So there's the airport at dusk. Let's bring the lighting down to night time and have a look at the ramp and see how the lighting is affected. Okay, 9.15 at night and as you can see we're well and truly dark now and we're looking at the terminal complex both airside and landside. Um, airside perfectly okay as you can see the lighting has come up a bit more. You can still see the center line lights here, the green lights and the lights that take you into the um, into the stands, no problem there. Lighting looks perfectly acceptable car park's partially lit. Again, you can see they've relied on a Sobo globes all over the place. Doesn't seem to be any proper airport lighting here. It's perfectly okay on the stands and actually there's loads of it out here on the de-icing pad. Little bit of lighting there by the cargo building and the control tower. And here's apron one where you can see the lighting is actually quite nice. 
And here's a quick shot where you can see some of the work that's been done on some of the building's land side, some of the enhancements. Here you've got this little lighting bits here and there, which bring these buildings to life a little bit more. And I like that, that's a nice touch. All in all, looks perfectly acceptable, and as I've said, from airside point of view, from a pilot's point of view, you've got everything you need. So I'm not going to spend any more time at night. I think we've had a good look at the lighting and the low light. Let's bring it up to dawn. Okay, just before 7am, and there you can see we've got the um, beautiful sun sunrise glow on the buildings there. Buildings just about to sort of turn the lights off there. And there we are looking in the other direction towards the sunrise. Okay, we're back to 11 o'clock in the morning, the sun's well up, here's the central area in front of us, and it's time to give you my conclusions. Okay, first and foremost, do I think it's worth the money? Well, at €13.19, Euros and 19 cents, I think it's perfectly okay, really, including, remember, it includes tax. Um, not so sure about some of the features, I haven't been able to find any animated humans, but let's look at the positives first. Um, it's another nice airport, it's an international airport, it's only a couple of hours away from the, U from the UK and from um, within most of Europe and uh, probably between five and six hours away from Asia. It's a nice airport, it's an international airport, it's been beautifully developed, the modelling is good, the quality is good from a pilot point of view, airside is excellent, it's everything you need. The only anomaly, the only thing I can't find is the touchdown zone markers on runway 29, but that's no big deal. Everything you need is there. Um, at night time or at dusk, again, the airport, like many others in Flight Simulator 2020, takes on a lovely glow about it, so long as the lighting is done nicely. Have you recently had a look at my review of the new Suvananbhumi Airport for Bangkok? You'll see just what can be achieved when, you really, when they work hard on the lighting. The lighting is perfectly acceptable and adequate, brings the terminal to the life quite nicely. And again, the same is during the night. So when you land here and want to taxi up and park up, really no problems at all. On the downside, um, the car modelling, I mean, these are going to be things really that really won't affect you as much as a pilot, but they do affect the quality of the scenery. Um, and realistically, these days, with what can be achieved with the simulator now, um, I think we've been a little bit let down by the quality. The car quality is terrible. Um, some of the, the, the they're not the worst I've seen, but they're not the best either. They're not properly modelled, unfortunately. They've decided to model the inside of the terminal, but they left so much out. Um, animated people, I repeat, I cannot find any or see any, and I have everything pretty much up at ultra. Um, I'm thinking and wondering whether this is a version issue. As far as I know, I have version 1.1. That's what it says in the manifest folder, or the manifest um, text file. But um, maybe they've done something since this was released, I don't know. But certainly within the terminal, um, we've been let down a bit. The signs, Some of the signs are the wrong way around when you look at them. You've got security area nicely modelled, but you can't get to airside from there because the, there are brick walls in the way um, and so many little shops and bits and pieces are missing um, and again a huge distinct lack of people um, I can only find one person standing out landside um, so the inside of the terminal could be much better done not sure about the trees landside around the car park they look a little bit suspect to me nothing really wrong with them but they just don't really look right um, I've not been to this airport in the real world, so uh, it's hard for me to say. It's just my opinion. Somebody might well come back to me and say, well, yeah, that's the way they're um, coutured at the real airport, in which case I stand corrected. But um, so those are things, I mean, I don't know. To make this a really great airport, I'd like to see them do more work and complete the internal, internal modelling in the main terminal. The cars need to be replaced with better models. Um, lighting's okay, but they've got that weird anomaly over on the, the um, apron 4 where you've got what looks like lit up signs on the doors of the hangars. Um, that, that seems to be a bit of a mistake for me. By contrast, apron 1 of the de-icing area looks great. And the only other great big standout showstopper for me 
was the sheer number of Asobo lighting globes all over the place. I'd like to see them removed and where possible I'd like to see the um, proper lamp poles put in. <coughs> um, I mean okay I appreciate to do all that really would be a lot more work maybe twice as much I don't know and it's up to the um, people that fly too high to decide whether they want to do that but for the moment the airport as um as an airport itself for you to go flying in and out of um, and to experience when you park up airside I am um, there are no complaints at all really no complaints at all um, that's perfectly okay it's just that for for an airport and when I say an airport I'm talking about the complete airport not just the runway and the airport and the airside ramp um, it leaves a bit to be desired in my opinion however as I said I do think it's worth the price in terms of the amount of work they've done it's probably just about worth the price because they've also done some work on the landside buildings um, and modeling in the city I believe as well they've enhanced the lighting there so it probably is worth it and just remember sim market are the cheapest at the moment we're just over 13 euros or just over 12 dollars or just over 11 pounds UK which include tax so in conclusion then guys it's a nice airport um no complaints i will fly in here it's poland it's um literally only a couple of hours away um i fly for a couple of vas who have flights going into poland so it will be fun it'd be nice so this is lee your virtual airline pilot thank you very much for joining me this is copernicus airport rosla in poland echo papa whiskey romeo still known as Stratovici when you try to access it in, a com in the simulator if you put in EPWR it'll come up with Stratovici um, but its real name now these days is Copernicus named after the astronomer it's a payware scenery by Fly Too High available for both PC and Xbox versions of flights in 2020 currently version 1.1 downloads at 2.4 gig installs at 3.4 gigs and it's available from Sim Market and FlightSim.to. Sim Market prices are the cheapest, 13 euros and 19 cents, which equates to 12 dollars and 71 cents US, or 11 pounds 76 pence UK. Prices include VAT and tax, and US and UK prices are estimates. So there you go. Um, hope you enjoyed the review. If you've been on the fence about this, um, I hope that I've shown you, given you a bit, an ins a bit of insight. To the developers well done it's another lovely little airport um, I understand perhaps that you've chosen not to do what you didn't want to do and that's your choice perfectly accepted um, I just point out what I think is missing and what could be improved but uh, apart from that yep it's great I'm really happy with it and um, just one last thing I have to remember is I was sent this for review um, I didn't buy it so um, my sincere thanks to the guys that fly too high for letting me have a copy for review. So thanks again guys. I'm hoping to get um, a live flight in again this week video. Which I will film and hopefully release before the end of the week. So you guys have a great week. And um, if you're flying at the weekend look out for me. I'll talk to you soon. So enjoy your week and um, bye bye for now.